Exelon strikes a multi-million dollar deal with a French utility giant, but are there even bigger costs at play? ATI Physical Therapy's CEO resigns and new leadership at the YMCA makes history. And here to go behind the headlines with us is Chicago Crane Chicago business reporter A.D. Quigg. Welcome back, A.D. So we know that Exelon has struck this $885 million deal to buy out its nuclear partnership with French utility giant EDF. What is the significance about this move and why might it be detrimental to Exelon's balance sheet? Yes, this deal adds $880 million in debt to Exelon's balance sheet. Uh, that'll get shifted to its power generation business, which of course includes ComEd here locally. This still needs to be okay from the state of New York, a few other federal agencies, um, but it adds to their debt. Like I said, at the end of June, the company had $1.2 billion in debt due within a year. So this is almost doubling that total. And this is coming at a big time of flux for Exelon. Its nuclear fleet has struggled financially because of wholesale power prices dropping in recent years. The company posted negative cash flow in 2019, in 2020, plus the struggle of its natural gas fired power plants. Uh, they had a huge major failure during that winter weather in Texas back in February, and it's separating its regulated utilities business from its power generation units. This is a big time of flux for Exelon. So uh, ATI Physical Therapy says its CEO has resigned. Do we know why and what steps is the company taking to fill that role? Yes, two weeks ago, the company had a big fumble when it went public as part of a merger with a blank check company. These are called SPACs. That merger was announced in February and closed in mid-June. Um, as a result of that massive fumble, which I'll get to, its CEO, the Diab, is stepping down effective immediately. Uh, taking its place will be John Larson, who's been on ATI's board since 2018. So that first public earnings report ATI posted after uh, that staff deal showed huge staff turnover, uh, revenue projections sharply lower than initially projected. Uh, its shares dropped by about 50% in two days. It's been one of the worst performances of these so-called SPACs, which have really taken off in the last year or so. Oh, wow. Okay. And lastly, uh, in other CEO news, the YMCA, based here in Chicago, has named a new leader for the organization. Uh, who is she and what is special about this announcement? Yes, her name is Suzanne McCormick. She's the first woman leader in the organization's 170-year history. She'll start in September, and she replaces another historic leader in the YMCA's history, Kevin Washington. He was the first black president and CEO. Uh, the Y has 2,600 locations across the country, about 13 in Metro Chicago, including Lakeview, Palatine, and Elmhurst. Uh, McCormick's last job was heading up United Way worldwide. She has 30 years of experience in the nonprofit world, including at the American Red Cross of Southern Maine. 170 years uh, of history. First woman. All right, A.D. Quigg, two women right here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.